Hi, welcome to what I think is episode 84 of Rosie Pitt's podcast. My name is Hannah and I'm recording this podcast from Northern Tasmania in Australia. I'm not sure I'll be able to stay outside recording because the sun is quite hot and I can feel that I can't keep my eyes properly open and um, there's a wind coming every now and then. But um, yes, today is just going to be a little bit of an episode when I share with you what I have finished in this last few days of 2018 and what's coming up next. Um, as I said, my name is Hannah. I'm in northern Tasmania. Uh, I'm a Swedish expat, but I live here now with my family. And uh, you can find me as Rosie Chick on Instagram and on Ravelry. And all my projects that I talk about, um, I have on Ravelry um, on my project pages. Um, yeah, so this is a knitting podcast. Uh, and today it is all about knitting, uh, like it normally is. Um, Thank you for joining me and I think I'm moving inside so I'll see you there in no time at all. It is my time to sit down and relax, enjoy the things that I love and to share them with you. Thank you so much for um, coming to watch this episode. I hope you will enjoy it and um, I'm always happy if you do a thumbs up or, you know, if you want to see more episodes, um, you can go and hit the subscribe um, button. Scroll the button. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. As you can see, if you have watched this podcast before, I'm in a different place than I normally am. I am with my husband out in the country in northern Midlands of Tasmania. And we are house sitting for my in-laws while they are away over Christmas. It is today, I think, the 29th of December. It's the weekend before New Year's Eve. We have had a beautiful Christmas at home with our children and with my family uh, that are visiting us. And then now we took just a few days, or a couple of days really, to... Um, come and just be the two of us out in the country we are relaxing and just taking it easy enjoying the quiet I have had some time to do some knitting but we have also been out um, walking and um, my husband is doing some work in the garden we're not sort of cooking any grand meals or anything we're just enjoying keeping it simple and just not spending too much time on things that we normally <laughs> spend a lot of time on really no housework no looking after children we're just having a really nice and relaxing time and um, yes it's it has been lovely it is lovely I did not think that I needed it really I, I, I always enjoy being at home I think um, but I do think that you can't really relax 100% if you're at home, even if you you on holiday, um, because there is always things to do. So it has it has been really nice. So in the last episode, I shared with you things that I had finished for Christmas, and one of those things were the socks for my daughter, the rainbow socks. And after I had completed those projects, I had five things listed in my Ravelry projects as ongoing projects and they were my gender bind shawl that I have been working on for quite a while and a simple beanie that was going to be a Christmas present but I didn't really it was the wrong size for who I was um, who it was meant to be for so I just did not complete that for Christmas and then I had the mittens that were a mystery cow um, at Halloween time and um, I had my big blanket that I started recently that's a long-term project and then I have these socks that I started 
quite a while ago like a sample knit for my self striping sock yarn and I have previously completed a whole pair of socks from just sample pieces of self striping sock yarn and I wanted to do that again so those socks are just they can't be completed until I have made more self striping sock yarn really to do a sample of um, so out of the five projects that I had um, on the needles there were three of them that I wanted to finish sometime soon and I thought oh it would be nice to finish them by the end of the year but I didn't really think that I would be able to do that because I did receive some yarn for Christmas my mum brought with her some Rauma from Norway and um, some Hillesfield yarn as well so um, I had that and I knew about it so I had been searching for different patterns some jumper patterns for that um, but then I thought okay I'll start with the easiest thing I'll just complete the beanie that I was working on and I did um, just a few days after Christmas and that's this beanie here and I used this was a sample for my own hand dyed yarn. So this is the Shock Hazelnut colorway that I have dyed up on my Deluxe DK yarn base. Um, and I had just a small skein of it. This is how much I have left. I think there was only about 60 grams of it. Um, so I just thought I'd use that as a sample. So I cast on for the Barley Hat by Tin Can Knits, but I did not put any of the pearl stitches on it. It has sort of a, a panel of um, a garter stitch in the original pattern. But I just used the cast, cast on stitches really and the decreases. So this is the child size of the pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's a really great basic pattern. So it didn't. I was already sort of at the point where I needed to start decreases. So I did not have a lot to do to finish this one. And I did and it fits my five-year-old daughter um, but she has beanies so I'm not sure if I'll I'm not sure it will be for her I might just keep it as a sample for my shop although this um, yarn base I don't carry anymore or I do have some skeins but they're the last ones I don't have any new yarn to dye up so it might be that if I find someone else who it fits uh, it might be a for that person but I finished that one and I was down to four current projects <laughs> and I thought okay we're going out of the country I have all the time um, for in uninterrupted knitting and it's you know obviously you know if you're a knitter you probably are a knitter you know that knitting is a really good way to relax and relaxing was one of the main goals for going out into the country and not having the children here with us so obviously I was going to bring a lot of, of knitting so I thought that was a good opportunity to bring those projects that I wanted to finish and I, I was I almost thought about only bringing those projects and nothing new so that I did not have any choice I just had to work on the projects that um, I needed to finish um, but I, I, I did bring the projects that I was working on and then I brought my new Christmas yarn and a pattern for something hoping that I could wait to cast that on but not promising myself anything I would just go with the flow so on my way in the car here and a few nights around Christmas the knitting that I was working on was my Yinderbine shawl by Meg Gatsby and the day when did we arrive here the day before yesterday and on the night the first night we were here I finished this shawl and bound it off and I did actually keep going so this was knit from here and down it has two lace panel sections there and then this is the last bit and in the pattern 
this bit is actually shorter than I did. This is how much yarn I have left and I have not waited because I don't have that working scale at the moment. Um, but I had, I felt like I had maybe 75% left of my 50 gram skein when it was time to buy it off according to the pattern. And I had a look in Ravelry for other people that had done the project and I could see that they had only used a small part of the third skein. That this was a kit that I bought from Adagio Mills and that's what this, um, this is the four ply from Adagio Mills, 100% alpaca. So I could see that other projects, they had plenty of yarn left when they bound off and I thought, I, I just, I'll just i just keep going. I looked at the proportions of the of the shawl and I thought, no, it will look fine if this last garter section is longer. And um, I didn't really want to have a lot of this left over because I just don't know what, what to do with these scraps. Um, so I kept going, but then on our first night here, I just got to a point where I didn't want to keep going and I didn't want it to look um, like it was the wrong proportion or yes, that it was too wide. So I just came to a point where I decided, okay, I'll just bind off now. Um, but I'm very happy with it. So I need to block it so that, because this is the top part but to me, it, that has the sort of triangle shape on it. But that needs to become straight and then it has sort of a slight crescent curve to it. Um, yes, I think it's really, I mean, it's a beautiful grey colour and I think the shawl pattern, the design, is just very simple and classic but beautiful and it will go really well with a lot of things. I mean the colour as well, it's, um, I think it's, it's going to be really easy to wear. The only thing now is I have to check how I feel about the alpaca. Sometimes alpaca can be a little bit prickly on, on the skin, but this is quite tightly spun I think and it just, it feels really soft. The yarn feels really, really soft, so it might no, not be a problem at all. I don't know if I'll keep it for myself or if it will be a present for someone, but I do think that a grey shawl in a simple pattern like this um, would be really wearable and useful. So even though I have a lot of shawls in my <laughs> wardrobe, there might be room for another one. I'm very, very happy to have completed this. I can't, cannot remember when I started it. I bought the, the kit at Bendigo in 2016 and then I didn't cast on I think until I think I cast it on earlier in no wait I bought it in 2017 at Bendigo and I don't think I cast it on that year I think I cast it on this year in 2018 so quite a few months ago I think very happy with it. It was a very nice knit. I was just a bit distracted by other things. I think this will be a good shawl pattern to use for other yarn as well actually. Um, yes, that's the Indivine by Meg Lasky. And I, I don't buy kits very often and I don't knit from kits very often. I think the only ones I've done before are some of um, some kits that my mum bought for me in Sweden with all my yarn and mitten patterns and things, other smaller projects. And I enjoy those, but I, I normally, I don't really, I'm not really attracted to kits normally. I like to feel like I've had something to do with the choice of, of colours and yarn and things. I don't know why. I know that kits are very popular and um, it's something that I have thought about myself uh, making for my Etsy shop, for my yarn to more dye up 
more with um, more for a specific pattern. But I don't know. I I enjoy it more when I go and just pick colors and sort of the whole planning and thinking and matching colorways. That's a lot of the enjoyment for me. But of course, I don't chop my own yarn. I have to think about my customers and what they enjoy. What what do you what do you like? How do you like to shop? Do you like to have kits that are ready so that you you know that the colors go together? And what sort of kits do you like? Do you like like um, shawl kits? And how many colors would you then prefer? Or do you like sweater quantities? Or just a, a, a sort of kit and maybe three or four skeins that you would be able to use for, for several different things. If you have any opinions, just uh, let me know. Write a comment below or send me a message. I would really enjoy to hear what you think. Okay, so then I had finished two projects and I had three left out of the five. And the next thing that I brought with me here that was ongoing were the mittens and this is the mitten that I have had completed since the mystery cowl by um, Jelly Bean Knits Stephanie Lotvin um, she had this mystery cowl around Halloween time so in October and um, I completed this mystery cowl in time for the end of that um, knit along it was a mystery knit in four parts. It had clue one, clue two, clue three, and clue four was that end of thumb. So I did this first mitten during the time frame of the knit along. But to enter the knit along, you only needed to complete one mitten. And during the time, I was quite busy. And even though it was spread out over four weeks and a bit more, I decided to only make the one mitten and wait with the next one. And it was coming up to us summer and I thought I'm not going to wear mittens anytime soon anyway. But it's just anything that comes in pairs. If you have not done both of them at the same time or soon after each other, it becomes one of those projects that just lingers and lingers because it's really hard to get back into it. And I was a little bit worried that this was going to become that project. And I really loved the first mitten so much. And I really wanted to have the pair. And I thought, I just need to get cracking on it. And I thought, if I can only just get started and get a bit of a momentum before the end of 2018, I will feel better about it. And I'll be more likely to keep going on it and have the mittens finished. So when I had finished the Yindabang shawl, the next day, yesterday, I thought, okay, I do have my yarn and I do have a pattern for the sweater that I want to cast on, but I'm just going to continue on the second mitten for this pair. And I did. And I did the first clue. And I thought, I'll, I'll keep going. So I did the second clue. And yesterday was just a time of total relaxation and, and just during the day I had a few times that I would sit down and knit and I kept telling myself I just do a little bit of the mittens and then you know I'll be happy and I can keep going and start on my new shiny exciting <laughs> sweater um, but then as I got started it was just so much fun and I thought I can do this I can do this so in 24 hours I think I completed the second meeting I had only just cast on and done two or three rounds um, after I finished the first mitten and um, yes so I did the cuff in the morning yesterday and then during the day I just did a little bit every now and then and last night 
I do the skeleton bit and then this morning I did the last bit of the hand and the thumb which is not really fast so yes by morning tea time today I had the second mitten finished and it felt so good it was just the greatest feeling because I knew that it was just so likely and so risky that I was just going to have this one mitten for ages and ages because that has happened to me before and um, the reason then I made a pair of Comey mittens from a really great mitten book of I think the Russian mittens and I had made started making them and I used a really fine merino really soft but not great for color work because it did not have any grab in it it was just so silky and soft that the mitten pattern didn't go very well together it didn't blend in like like these do so I completed one mitten and it was just sitting there and sitting there and then finally and it was probably years later I decided to do the second mitten and it was so much later and I found it really hard to get the same um, gauge as I got for the first mitten so they came out looking a little bit different they were fine but um, I just did not want that to happen again so I'm so happy that I came out here and I did not have any distractions and I could just allow myself to have that relaxing time and finish the mitten and I feel really proud um, that I did not get distracted and wanted to and I didn't allow myself or I didn't really want to cast on my new project um, which was great because it's not fun when you feel like you're just forcing yourself to do something so when you actually feel like doing it and it's something that you thought was going to be hard it's just great so I'm happy you know that now <laughs> I think you, you got the you got that um, so these are mystery till death mystery mittens by Stephanie Lotton. They are two identical mittens. They have a man on one side and a woman on one side. So when you wear them, you get one of each on the foot and one of each on the palm. And I knit these in my own hand dyed um, white gum wool base, the fingering tassie super fine merino. And I just used the colours that I had. Um, in my stash this is the third color work projects I make with these colors the gray that I've used for the base and the white I have not used before they were just um, very small leftover skeins that I had but the blue green red and pink I have used for two projects before and those skeins just keep giving and giving. I still have plenty left and I am a will be able to make at least one more um, project out of that yarn. But I, I, I've talked about this before, but I just really love how this um, Tasmanian Superfine Merino from White Gum Wool just really sort of blends in really well together in color work these have not been washed or blocked or anything these are just straight off the needles um, and they're, they're super soft and I'm sure they'll get a bit fluffy and um, but that's that's what you want with mittens I mean you even I know in Sweden you even sort of brush them or try to just get them to felt together a little bit and that all the yarn just blends in more and you get they're really they can be really fluffy and really just mixed and um, yeah so I think this will just get better and better with more wear really so and um, one of the things I was thinking about when I finished these and that was sort of keeping me going and motivating me was that um, it's my sister's birthday on the 4th of January and even though she's in Sweden and I'm here my mum will be going back to Sweden 
uh, towards the end of January and she will be able to bring these back for my sister for a um, birthday present for her. And I have made her mittens before. One of the kits actually that my mum bought me was for a pair of mittens with like a crossbone skull in Rauma Binul and I gave them to my sister and that, that's a few years ago now so I don't know she might not need a new pair of mittens but I just think they would be cool for her and honestly I don't need them myself <laughs> and I already have um, sample knits for this yarn base go to my sister and um, she can look at them and uh, just enjoy them and if she doesn't feel like wearing them I guess that's fine as long as she still loves them and appreciates them <laughs> I won't know about it because I'm never in Sweden when it's winter so I don't really know what she wears when it's cold outside <laughs> so that meant that I finished the three projects that I had that were ongoing and sort of short term even though some of them had been on the needles for a bit longer and the only thing left on my needles um, are then my um, DK weight leftover scrappy yarn blanket and the self striping sample sock um, yes and they Still at home and I have no plans to finish them anytime soon um, but I had also brought with me out here um, a pattern and some yarn to start a new project and I had done all the planning for this before so I'll see where I'll start so uh, a few years ago my I was that was when I was really into making mittens and I had some Roma Finul yarn and um, I asked my mum one year to buy me some more Roma because I couldn't really find anything local I didn't have any of the white gum wool back then and I just wanted yarn that was good for mittens color work mittens so I asked mum to buy some more Roma I can't remember if I told her the colors or if she just some colors that she thought I would enjoy and she brought back from Sweden let's see if you can't really see that's a purple a green a black and a charcoal two of each game so 100 grams of each the only thing is that these are the the three ply sticky gum which is uh, the I guess it's a DK white 105 meters per 50 grams about 22 stitches per 10 centimeters so it's the DK version and these this is very popular for mittens in Norway and Scandinavia I guess but um, I just never got around to finding a project for them I had it's an odd amount because I had 100 grams of each and really for mittens you only need a tiny tiny bit and it's always hard to break those quantities of yarn and that have potential to become something more and only use a tiny bit of it I'm sure you know what I mean so I had the four colors 100 grams of each and I just did not want to I just didn't know what to do I wasn't really making any mittens in DK weight so they've been sitting in my stash for a while basically and now that I've been doing more garments, more jumpers, not so much into cardigans anymore because I find jumpers easier for me to wear and I enjoy them to knit more than I enjoy knitting cardigans. Um, so I said to mum, look, I have these skeins of Rauma and I really would like to wear them, uh, to, would like to use them and I think they would be fun to use in a colour work jumper. And I said, I have these four colors, and they would be enough for the color work yoke and color work. I just need a base color 
to go with them. So I had a look at Raumath's website and I uh, looked at where I could get hold of it online and there was not really anywhere for me where I could get this. But um, I found a website online shop in Sweden that had some available. So I told mum about it and she said, I'll get it for you. Just tell me what it is that you want and I'll uh, put it in my cart and buy it and I'll take it with me to you. So after looking at all the colours and trying to think of which colour would work and that I would wear, I decided on this grey. I'm not sure what the light is like in here, but it's funny. Um, so this is the 113 grey colour. And you can see my, my old skein, they, they, they look really vintage compared to the new um, labels. So I got that, I think it will work well. So I had that, she got me eight skeins of this, which I hope will be enough. That's 400 grams. I hope that will be enough just for the main colour. Otherwise I'll have to figure something out. Um, so I had that and I did some gauge swatches. Let's see. So I did one on think three millimeter which is what I often wear, often use for DK weight yarn so and you can see it's very loose and I got a, the gauge like an Aran weight or something but it's just really loose and not a very good um, fabric for a jumper and I thought oh, I need to I needed to tighten up quite a bit. So I went down to a two millimeter needle and I got a much better fabric. And I got 20 stitches per 10 centimeters, which was um, good. Good stitch gauge to find a pattern for a DK weight jumper. So I had that and and I've done it in the round but sort of a fake in the round where you just carry the yarn in the back so you only do the knit carry the yarn knit carry the yarn um, because my stitch gauge knitting in the round is very different to knitting back and forth my pearls are very fluid um anyway so i had that in a two millimeter needle and i don't know why i had to go down so much to get a good stitch definition Colourwork jumper I did recently in the Bendigo Stella DK weight 8 ply. I use a 2.5 millimeter needle, I think. And I think I got an okay stitch definition with that. So it might just have been that I've been just too relaxed over the holidays and I just have loosened up my knitting a lot. But I know that I have to go sort of with the two and just see how I go. I might go, have to go up to a two and a half millimeter to get the right gauge. But anyway, it gave me an idea. Um, so I went out and looked for a jumper that had um, a gauge of 20 stitches per 10 centimeters. And found a few and I was favoriting on Ravelry. I made a bundle for DK weight colorwork jumpers and in the end, after a lot of debating and thinking and several times going looking, I decided on the Starfall by Jennifer Steingas. And Jennifer Steingas, she has a, quite a few colourwork jumpers on Ravelry and they're all very, very popular. Um, and I would have ha been happy making most of them. So I just went for the one that had the right stitch gauge, really. Um, so that made the choice easy. I just went with what will work for my yarn and my knitting. So I got this and I printed it out. Also put it on my iPad and my phone. I had it available everywhere. Packed the yarn and I brought it with me out here. And... Um, because I only finished the mittens 
this morning. It was only later today, um, after we had been for our two hour um, bushwalk, <laughs> that's when I finally cast this jumper on. And I did more sort of planning by deciding what colours to work where in the colour work and I had my colour pencils out and I did all this planning and then I cast on in the pattern it calls for casting on the sleeves first so that's what I have done and I have decided on having purple um, cuffs and I've stopped here at two and a half centimeters because that's what the pattern says is should be the length of the cuff. I'm not sure if I'm completely happy with that. I feel like it needs to be a little bit longer. I'm not sure. But um, then I will have green coming in. And there's some color work. And then it goes to the gray sleeve. It's hard to see that purple color. Um, so I don't know. I might. I don't know if I'll finish or complete the first sleeve. I might start the second sleeve so I'm working on both sort of at the same time once the color work is done on, on this one I'll start with the purple on the other sleeve and then I'll probably do what the, the pattern tells me and do the bottom last it's a bottom up um, jumper so that will make it a little bit tricky if I don't have enough yarn but I'm um, I'm just hoping for the best and hopefully <laughs> If I don't have enough yarn, I can make it work somehow. Because I have plenty of yarn, I just don't have unlimited quantity of the main colour. which And that could be the problem. So that's happening, and that's very exciting. So that's what I'll be working on um, tonight, for our last night out here. And um, also, it will be my main project for a little while, I guess. Um, my blanket I'm mostly working on um, well just every now and then when I just need something easy without thinking really but then what's coming up will be the 2019 Osidaya Sock Along which is um, well, some people have already started and that's fine that's great but um, I've talked about this knit along a lot before and I have um, threads up in my Ravelry group and you can find the Ravelry group by going to Rose Hip Knits Podcast under the Groups tab in Ravelry and there you can find the group and it has threads for this knit along. There's one thread for prizes that have been donated. Thank you so very much to those of you who have donated prizes and thank you to those of you who have shown your appreciation for, for the makers that have donated things because it is very generous um, and then there's a thread for just at the moment general chatter people have been talking about favorite dyes and where you find dyes from different states and um, we've been talking about our plans and showing each other our stash and um, so that's really fun so soon in just a couple of days I'll have to start putting fo threads up for finished um, projects but there's a lot of information in the threads on Ravelry so go and have a sneak peek there I think it'll be lots of fun there's lots of people that are getting involved so that's just it's going to be fun and uh, yes I haven't been knitting on socks for <laughs> a week maybe now so, but it feels like I haven't been working on a sock for a long time so I'll be ready to cast on a new pair of socks I just have to decide which yarn to start with. I think I now have yarn from every state and territory. So, yes, I'll just have to see um, what I'll start with. So that's what's coming up. I'll be casting on some socks, but I'll be working on my jumper as well. One thing I thought about when I mentioned my blanket earlier is that I did receive a swap package and that had some um, DK weight leftover yarn for my blanket and I've already put that in my blanket. My blanket is starting out as a green and blue color so I'm doing 
three strands held together and I've started with all my green and blue scraps and I've come very close to being finished with those colours and I had some more coming in this swap parcel which was great and then I have greys and pinks and purples and I might go from green blue to grey and then into purple and pink together but we'll see. I don't have the blanket here so I can't show you so I don't know why I'm talking about it. So the person that I received a swap parcel from that had some of the DK way down that I was able to put into my blanket was Nicole of Cola Girl Collective and we had decided before Christmas when we were sort of talking about some Christmas themed colorways and things for our Etsy shops and I suggested how about if we do a swap with our Christmas themed um, yarns if we have any and I did have the Secret Santa skein um, so we talked a bit back and forth and then we decided to do two fingering weight skeins and just some extra goodies from our sort of local area and some minis because Nicole is doing a, a few scrap projects with fingering weight and I said well I'm doing one with my with DK weight scrap so Nicole sent me some of uh, her leftover DK weight yarn that I put in the blanket and then she also sent um, two skeins of her hand dyed yarn from her shop so her shop is Cola Girl Collective and I had very chicly <laughs> asked uh, or said I would be very happy if I could get one of your mohair um, skeins. So she did send me one of her mohair in the high tea colorway. So it's a, a kid mohair and mulberry silk. It's the myrtle lace lace. So this is the high tea and I actually have purchased a skein from uh, Nicole in the high tea colorway on her tweed base. So she sent me that, and the other skein was her 100% um, kind of Australian new merino yarn base. I think it's the same yarn base that I have my new merino fingering. She calls her the little outback four ply, and this is in the Turtle Day um, colorway. And I did say, oh, it would be lovely if I get uh, two skeins that I can use together in, in a um, in hat. So I got those two, and they're so beautiful, and I was so happy to receive them. And then I got the leftovers for my blanket. And then Nicole didn't stop there. She sent more things. So she also sent some little mini skeins. And I think they're all DK, so I can put them in my um, blanket. But they're just so beautiful and I'm not really sure what these bases are. Let's see. But I think they're all her hand dyed. I've got some other ones as well that were more commercial yarn and I've put them uh, in my blanket. So this is the Outback DK that one and I think this might be the same. Yes. Outback DK beautiful and then this one is a new base and um, she calls the Grand Prix which is a merino and nylon DK weight beautiful and that's Nicole's card so that was so sweet of Nicole sent all those all those things and then she didn't stop again she didn't stop she sent me this cute little um, I guess it's, it's very it's a perfect size for double pointed needles or crochet hooks and it has some uh, my little ponies on it as well and in there she put some nice little chocolates and also some beautiful stitch markers and I I felt I mean so happy and um, thankful but also I felt a little bit like oh I should have put some more things into Nicole's parcel that I sent her so I'll see I might if it's okay with Nicole I might um, 
I might use the stitch markers for a price for the um, Posidaya Sokolo. So, because I feel like I want to share some of this gorgeous stuff with um, some of you guys. So, we'll see. But that's something that arrived in the mail before Christmas and it was great. It was, it's always fun to do swaps and to receive some fun things. So, I think that's all for this episode from the countryside of the Northern Midlands. Um, I did try to record outside. I might have some outtakes from that. And I tried to record it in different parts of the house. But um, in the end, I had to go into the bedroom and close the door to make sure there were no flies in here and that it was quiet enough to record without having some weird background noise. So I hope it's been okay. It's not the lightest place maybe but I hope it's been fine it's been nice and quiet for me anyway and I have enjoyed this time to share with you my finishing of projects and um, exciting new starts and uh, plans for 2019 I do hope that you will join in on the Ossidaya sock along it's not only for socks it's really anything made with Australian hand-dyed yarn or New Zealand hand-dyed yarn can enter and knit along and it's just it's just about us being a group and talking about um, Interdise Australia and things we like and I'm also waiting for um, people to show different patterns that they're going to use so that we learn more about new designers maybe and new patterns that would be fun and uh, so far we've talked a lot about yarn and had plans for what yarns to use but um, I think next we have to <laughs> we don't have to but it would be fun to talk about different designers and patterns but do do join in on that or at least go and have a look on, on Ravelry to see what it's all about as I said at the beginning of the episode you can find me as Rosie Chick on Ravelry and Instagram please contact me and message me if you have anything you would like to share with me or if you have any questions if you're interested in any of my hand dyed yarn I have a shop on Etsy called Rose Hip Island and I will try to link to a few things in the description box below the YouTube video and I think that's all for this time I'm going to now enjoy our last evening here in the <laughs> nice quiet house before we go back to our children tomorrow and relieve my mum from um, her grandmother duties full time and of course we miss the children so it would be lovely to come home for some cuddles um, yes thank you so much for joining me thank you for being with me this past year and um, I hope we have a fun 2019 in front of us where we'll keep doing more things together and um, I'll keep sharing with you and I hope you keep sharing with me so thank you so much everyone and until we see you until I see you next time and um, take care bye